Hello everybody, welcome to the tri-board meeting for tonight. Um, we're running a bit late in organizing ourselves, so if you have some dead air time, we're just getting ourselves situated. So we're all here, we got the school committee, the finance committee, and of course the ever popular select boards here. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing, we have several things on our agenda tonight and it's kind of just, we could just probably do it as a hodgepodge if we wanted to. <coughs> Who wants to? You can go ahead. Yeah, we do. So we were, what's listed is projection for FY16, um, the five-year budget projection, and then just general budget discussion as a wrap-up. So what's the difference between one and two? Oh, whether it's one or two years? Yeah, one year or five year. So um, I'll start. Um, the book, the budget you have, Mr. Nixon, is um, says 12-12-12, or 12-1-2014. Right, so the five-year uh, budget projection that we, uh, is the most recent one is the, uh, should I have a copy of it? So, is the, uh, one that we uh, we submitted to the uh, subcommittee, and it was, that was the last one that was reviewed. So I think that's the most recent one. And that's the 12 12-1. 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-1, 12-
if we can increase those revenues uh, naturally just by where we were in this past year. So if, if we could get those fiscal 14 updated, is there any reason we can't have those? Um, what I can do is I can give you the, the 14 numbers as closed by Yale unaudited. Uh, if those, if that's acceptable, I can do that. That would be fine. All right. Yeah. Do you have like a ballpark of what it is now? Right. I think it was like we were a little over what we projected. Yeah. But how much do you have that ballpark? Uh, I'm going to be guessing here, so don't hold me to this, but I think we were about $200,000 over um, when all said and done. You know, that should be converted into, that was part of what was the conversion, well, will be converted into free cash. May I ask on those revenues, is it a, the kind of 2000 that went to a baseline revenue that then can serve as a percentage increase into the next year, or is it some kind of one-time revenues that we won't see again, the 200000 increase? Um, about 100000 of it was recurring revenue, so estimates uh, the, of actual uh, local receipts that exceeded the, uh, the estimates placed on the recap sheet that generates the, the free cash. So based on that, would you be comfortable taking the revenue figures for the next four years and increasing them by that same $100,000? Um, I'm not sure that I could uh, safely say that with respect to FY16. Um, I can see that for 17, 18, and 19, but 16, I think we've, we've nudged it up just about as much as okay. we can at this point, at, based upon what we knew to be true back in December. Now, since that time, we've seen a big increase in meals tax. Uh, we're looking for a second quarter of that. Uh, we're hopeful that that is, we're very sure that that's not a mistake on the Department of Revenue side. We think that it is driven by two things. One of which is that people who weren't paying their meals taxes got caught up, but then the impact of UMass football coming back to uh, McGurk Stadium, I really think, had a big impact on people at dining out, uh, plus the recovery in the economy. So, so it still leaves us with our issue. Of, you know, we're saying that in 16, our revenue is, I mean, at FY19, our revenue is projected to be 16.5, and our expenses are estimated to be 18 million. So we're oh, one and a half million short, in our, which is now our, did I do that right? Small numbers. Last page. Yeah, 1.48 million and a half short. Oh. In there, presented. This isn't, yeah, but then again, this is only based on. This is based on the five year projections, not on the actual, actual budget presented to this board, right? It's in the, so, do those school numbers change dramatically, potentially? They went down. Pardon? Down. They go down? Yes. From the five-year projection. From the five-year projection. That's helpful. E well, everybody's. But helpful. did everybody else's? Is my question. I think asked. everybody's went down. So, so it's not a 1.2 shortfall. It's a shortfall, but not 1.2 is what we think at this point. Well, if we have those revenues that are going up, and we can project those figures up, and if we have, if we're able to continue with the 2% limitation or so, which is <coughs> substantially less than what they asked for for 16, and we can project those ahead into 19, we are closing that gap. We are. I don't know. Seems I don't know. <laughs> well, and a big portion of the expense increase in the last three years from 17, 18, and 19 
is also um, the OPEP funding methodology. Not wrong or right, but just mm -hmm. that's the way it's been projected in here. That's almost half a million dollars just in that year. That's true. Mm -hmm. and how realistic is that 2% for point? For five years. Yeah. Well, electricity, I think, blew as long as 2%. So I don't think our next electrical contract is going to be as low as it is now. So I don't know if this one's good for three or a half. One more year, I think. One more year. October, um, October 2017. Two more. Is that what you just did? Yeah, two years. I'm, I'm trying to blend and extend that one. So I'm going to try to take advantage of lower energy prices and extend the length of the contract. See how it goes. So we can, yeah, so there's electricity, there's fuel. Fuel went down, but it's going back up again. It's, that's going to be a big one. I don't know if you're going to actually be able to hold to a 2% all the way through. It's a good starting point. See how it's possible. Contractual obligations exceed 2%. Yeah. Personal yeah. cost. So. Would you like to say, Howard? I'm fighting it really hard. <laughs> I know. Oh, I'm looking at him. No, he's got something to say back two, there. Two percent still isn't going to do it. I know. When you take a look at the budget deficit, it's people. I mean, you either get a hold, start to get a hold of it now, and have a at least a hiring freeze, or you know, a year or two, you're going to the voters for a substantial, I hate to say it, over up. Yeah. Uh, there's just no way to make this work. And even going through the OPEP funding that's in here, that doesn't solve the OPEP problem yes, by a long shot. So I think it behooves us all to sit down and roll up our sleeves and actually have a financial plan that gets us through the next five years. Well, and it seems to me that the areas of focus would, I mean, logically are going to be the largest line items. I mean, we talked last time about retirement benefits just as an overall category. And, you know, it's going to take a while to do an analysis, figure out what we think we can do, if anything, with that line item. And then by the time you actually see the end result of potential changes to that line item, you're, we're a ways out because you're potentially looking at collective bargaining. So that one, I would think we need to start on sooner rather than later. Yeah, which we can, we can do that for ours. Although we have two groups we can't bargain with right now. Right. That notices though. Yeah. Yeah. As they, we have two groups that are changing uh, representation. That's what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not sure they're really thinking about how, how they're thinking about. It looks like unions to me. Yeah, but I'm not sure about that second one. They, I think they call themselves as a union, but is it truly a union? The the one that they're trying to move to. Whatever it's bargaining. It is. <laughs> so Can I go back to Howard? How do you define a financial plan? What are the components? What do you think we need to do? What is how is it different than what we are trying to do here with a five year projection of expenses and revenues? I think it's it's behooves us all to sit down and say this is how we're going to approach not only this year, but the next four years of, and actually have an agreement and say we're standing by that. And you're going to look at every single, it, every single item in here, both revenue and expenses, to see what we can hold and what we can't, and what's available, uh, what department needs are. And uh, again, my 
view of this is you're not going to be able to fund every department in the manner that they want or deserve. And we, we as a town have to decide what it is we're going to spend our money on. We have a lot of projects too, I think, down the road that are in the limelight to, for building. So there's still some more projects that are out there that are filtering in, correct? Mm -hmm. And so we're not dead in the water yet in that area, which certainly will help. But it, that goes to debt and interest on the on, on the line. So the more you're going out <laughs> and borrowing, the more effect that's going to have on your on your operating expenses. So everything's involved in this, and we have to decide what we're going to do and when we're going to do it. And I think if we strategize, so but it say, still helps with the bottom line whether or not we still have to have these other things in place. I'm not talking about the infrastructure of the school. We may have to look at fire and police, as we should be looking at fire and police, because we put them on the burner for a couple of years now. And they really need to have a, a looking at this year, too. So, I mean, there's a lot of things it's, that are in it's discussion. It's a prioritization exactly. that needs to be done. Well, exactly. And I, and I think that has to be accompanied with a risk analysis, because it's one of the Methods to help you prioritize, you know, where all common sense. Well, <laughs> where, you know, where are we at risk? So, to your point, if it's, yeah. you know, your opinion of maybe in public safety, it may be somebody else's that it's in the DPW infrastructure. I mean, at some point, we have to stop the. I mean, you, <laughs> it's no secret the buildings are in very rough shape and they're going to be a big expense to the taxpayers, and so isn't the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So we're 100 years old. It's, the rest of it needs to be updated. All, all I'm saying is you can't do everything at once. Right. right. And, and those are all no. capital items. They're not, not in the budget. I, I know, but it, if you concentrate more on the capital items, this stuff right here is even going to get worse. I, if it's, the override, pretty, it's pretty bad right if now. The, <laughs> if the override don't go through, if an override doesn't go through, and you have to start cutting, and you already voted into the buildings and the infrastructure, what's going to happen to these operating budgets? Just remember that for, when you go up 2.5%, we're roughly getting $300,000 in revenue. Well, we only so went. When one, you're down a million two, yeah. we only went one point. That's a lot of two and a half. We only went 1.8 this year. Come to the what, what What's 1.8? 1. 1.8 1. on a tax rate. Oh. No, you, oh. no, we went. You went to the max. It was 1.8 some. Plus new growth. Plus yeah, plus okay. new growth. So then we came up with our list of what we thought our priorities last time. So as, as we start talking about some of the bigger picture ones of those, is that where we start framing our a financial plan to move this along a little bit? Well, I, th I think so. I mean, I don't know how else. You have to throw everything on the table at the same time and then start carving things off and say, you know, low impact or no can touch or, you know, whatever. And then that's going to leave a finite number of things on the table worth discussing. Like I say, I mean, if you just look at, you know, um, Health insurance is 1.1 million, something like that. That's a pretty big line item. And to the extent we dig in and and you know really tear that apart, figure out what's driving the costs, what opportunities are there for change. I'm just going to say that. Um, you know what tenants do we want to agree to? You know we don't want there to be any additional burden on our employees, or we're wanting to open a discussion about sharing some of the cost further sharing the cost, you know, it, at the end of that analysis, it's determined that the best we're going to do is save $20,000 on a $1.1 million line item. Well, that's a stake in the ground we now have to work around. But we may find out that there's a lot of opportunity in that line item. I don't know. But, you know, so you have to attack all of these things. And I think we have to stop <laughs> talking and start analyzing. Yes. Yeah. I, I think that our, our process where we've been dealing with department by department and we're going to have a school tonight and we have what, one more round? Mm -hmm. We have fire? Okay. I think that that's pretty much as far as we can go. 
in that fashion of dealing e with each department and trying to figure out what they need and, and, and how much they can cut or what the impact of those cuts are and, and come up with a budget based on the way things are now. The next level of dealing with the budget does have to be at this higher level of um, you know, what are the town's priorities? What are their areas that, um, that the select board wants to focus on over other areas? Um, so, you know, whether it's, a, you know, the, no department's going to tell you that, you know, we, cutting us in half um, is, is important if, uh, so that you can save a department over here, which is one of your higher risk to the town departments. So that's the kind of thing that the, the select board has to say, has to really look at, I think, that the, the priorities of the town as a whole without even getting to the capital. I mean, this is, this is because uh, that will help determine the capital. When you determine what your functioning pers um, priorities are, and then you'll know where to put your capital to to support those budgets, mm -hmm. those departments. Here are a couple of departments that may have any capital for those departments, either. Hmm? Year of a couple departments, so you may not have capital for those departments. Well, and I think sooner rather than later, we need to. <clears throat> this conversation needs to go far more public than this room. It does. And and again, at a high level, because you know, we present and absorb so much, but um, we have to start bringing this out to taxpayers of the residents and have them be part of the conversation about I mean we can go through that process and we're making a lot of assumptions I mean we know a lot about the inner workings of the town more than everybody and we're going to come with our own paradigms if you will and assumptions to the table which may not be in concert with what the residents of Hadley are looking for right now so um, I think this you know, sooner we get that out and frame it for people, uh, it's, this is going to be a long process, and I think that that should start sooner rather than later. But there's another area I think that we need to, and I, I think there's a number of things we have to start working on all at once. Another um, is while we're while you're figuring that out, because you can't even tell the town if you were to go for an override, what kind you would want right now, or how how exactly. much. Um, You've got some work to do first, which is saying we have identified the priorities, we have cut back as much as we can, we've got the limitations, and this is and then this is what we need. Um, but other areas of efficiency, I know we were looking at this this report of reserves, the reserve <laughs> funds, funds that have been sitting there. We don't know exactly how long by each line item because there aren't dates on all of them as when they were set up. I think that it would be best before we ask the town for any more money at any point that we go through and say, oh, we've got 50000 sitting in this article, we can pull it in now. We've really got to do a, a cleaning up of that. We have a five-page report, five report from the accountant mm -hmm. on funds that are sitting there. Some are restricted, some are not. I, I think that we need almost a subcommittee to go through line by line and say, is this one we can tap or isn't it? Mm -hmm. Does this collapse back into free cash and help us get through another year while we figure out these other things, mm -hmm. or isn't it? Well, um, I think that's Howard's point about you know having a financial plan. That should be part yeah. of the plan because every single reserve line item, there should be a program, if you will, around how those reserves are utilized or not. Right, yeah. and when they come back in. Yeah. She's, she's talking about uh, what we call the pot of gold Capital. report. Yeah. You know, there are a number of articles that haven't been spent. And just as a housekeeping measure, every four or five years we go through and sweep it, and we haven't done that in four or five years. So it's time to, right. to go through and pick up the couple thousand that are left over from an article, or mm -hmm. maybe so, a few actually, more thousand than that. That's something we can actually do with that probably not a subcommittee. We can just probably have that identify as <coughs> what are all those articles? When were they voted? Mm -hmm. Is that twelve hundred dollars for that loader? Is that left over from ten years ago? Yeah, is that balance or is that current so it still needed to be spent? Right. It's hard that, to tell. Those are yeah, the ones the and, and then we would <coughs> then we could probably have to put an article on the on the warrant to actually uh, Housekeeping. Yeah, yeah. clean Housekeeping. them up yeah. and put them back into the capital reserve fund. Yeah. If they came from capital reserve fund, 
which as I understand from your agenda, we have to do right now because you're yep. planning to close it. So if you could have a placeholder warrant article in there for clean up, whether we get to all of them or whether we just get to a handful of them, mm -hmm. it will help get us um, some free cash and, and get through fiscal 16. Um, and then maybe get more information from Gail. Then is I mean she makes notations on that. Oh, she definitely have, have to be on the committee. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's <laughs> I mean, a lot more ins and outs that she knows about. Unless she could just prepare it. I, don't I think she could just prepare it. Oh, that'd be and great. And then we could just go through it. See what's balanced. Yeah. It's really because actually when you start looking at it and you get through the fuzz of it, a, a lot of them are CPA stuff. And yeah. That's over here and that other world we can't touch. And then there's a lot of capital and then there's a lot of the, the, then once you do those two things, then there's just a few of the weird ones that are like, why do we have this deer? This well, like the Route 9 project that sat there for yes several years. That that's what you look at. But now we're looking at now we're looking at the Route 9 <laughs> project. So yeah. the 47 culvert. Yeah, 47 Is culvert. There some of that we want to move there. around. Do we want to change it? I mean, we actually do have, if, if the governor comes to him as promise, we do have some promising things coming for, towards us. I mean, we'll have more Chapter 90 money. So our highway department does a really good job keeping the roads up with the money we have now. And if we get another $100,000, hundred do we start using that for more things like the culvert repair versus paving? Um, or do we do more paving with it? Which Personally, I think we're all going to be hurting on paving this year because the whole world's about to explode in a few more weeks. Mm -hmm. um, the whole season is coming. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, yeah. First time we're looking for it. All those embryonic potholes are just brewing. You can just see them in the road as you drive by going, oh, man, that one's going to go soon. Uh, so maybe we do have to pay, put more of that, put that 100000 in paving versus doing something else. But uh, that is one good thing. One, positive side in this if the governor holds true. So what else was on the list go for? So we had, so we've talked about the pot, pot of gold, it's going to be the, forever the pot of gold report, but the, the reserve account report. Well, it's actually just, it's just the account report is probably another way of putting it. The non-operating, non-operating. Well, they're all reserves. Um, they're, they're balance sheet accounts. But, yeah, but they're not really they're reserves. They're necessarily reserves. Their grants, their so their deposits, their balances. Their, that's what I'm saying. It's like a balance sheet as opposed to an income account. And we don't know if their balance is because it's done or balances because it's partway done. Right. So it could be like circuit breaker or something that's kind of moving stream. Right. I mean, you, I mean, the selectman. There's one that says insurance under 20k. That's a revolving account. So there are revolving accounts in here. There's gift accounts in here. Mm -hmm. The uh, cable accounts in here. These are just non-operating accounts. Right. But, but it's like we have else. a plan for that, so we're going to ask the accountant to go through all of yes. those. Yes. So I was just looking for more more action items. Well, then if you take this, and then we start at the top, then the the biggest thing we have is I keep saying this. People just smile at me. Um, what do we want to set, or do we want to set our goal for the stabilization account? Do we want to say we want the stabilization account to be 10%, 15%, 20% of the overall operating budget? And that's the number we always shoot for. Which stabilization account are we talking about? The, the capital the stabilization? No. Or no. The stabilization. The stabilization. The stabilization. The stabilization. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't think we can afford to put any more money into that. You know, you're talking about limiting services and things and you want to stick money into an account that we can't touch. No, he's talking about setting, setting a policy, policy around the stabilization, which we, would we, potentially I they don't fluctuate. touch it. We have stabilization for a reason. We have stabilization for O moments. Correct. Um, and they got to be a big O moment. Um, and then the, and the water, uh, sewer was a uh, perfect reserve. example this year. We had a sewer line collapse. We took the reserve account. Mm -hmm. A stabilization from water, and we we put, took money out of it to pay for this, and now our stabilization in water and sewer is like it's fifty six percent. It's half of what it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what those are for. You know, if we have a big issue with a fire truck or a school roof collapse or a school bus needs to be replaced or we lose all our school buses and a roof collapse, 
Um, then we would have to tap into this. I hope we have insurance on all this you're talking about. You do, but your insurance isn't going to cover all They don't cover 100% of no. us. So in, terms, in terms of that, everybody seems to have an opinion on it. Um, but there are best practices that are promulgated by the MM, MMA. The ICMA. ICMA, the uh, Association of Finance Committee. I mean, it's pretty easy to get all of that material together and just hash it out and make a decision. It is. So we so should like, put it on the agenda as something that we need to do. We've always said it at 10%, uh, though. That's kind of, or kind of the goal was like 10. That, no. It's, that uh, seems high. 10? Yeah. We never even no. said that. Where did no, you come we, up with that? We had it. I think the highest it's ever been since oh, wow. I've been around is about 2.4 million. Yeah. And then we took it down. We had a, a number of items that we had to pay for. It got down to about one six, one seven, and we had to put back. I mean, when we went down that low, we all agreed that when free cash became available, we would work on a plan to get that stabilization account back to two million dollars. And the two million figure, as I said, our last meeting was what we calculated. Uh, I guess a standard catastrophe, you know, what, what could we uh, hold out, you know, and still uh, still manage to survive. And it came out to that $2 million figure. And we've tried to keep that um, and keep it in real dollars. So whatever interest was accrued on it, it's been the Finance Committee's goal to keep that interest um, accruing to keep the $2 million a real figure. Uh, years ago, when we were making 10 or 12 percent on it, that's when we said, Jesus, you know, we get, you know, 10 or 12 percent out of the two million, we could actually buy some capital items. And we did for a couple of years, mm -hmm. but now that the rate's down to point whatever, sure. uh, that, that interest isn't, isn't a whole heck of a lot. So could we just agree to put that on as a, an agenda item? We could. We could. I mean, we, we, you're going to find that they all have different. Everyone has a different one, and we really just truly have to choose one. Um, some people say ten. Some people say twenty-five. I keep. Five percent. Yeah. Right, but we need so, we need to have a forum or a methodology to arrive at a conclusion, which we don't yeah. have yet. We just have a bunch of opinions. Is what I, all I'm saying. You're going to have more. What I'm saying is you're going to have more opinions if you actually go to MMA. Well, I'm going to give you a fair warning okay. for just the general public here. You've got a group of people out there that are not going to like you putting money into the stabilization yeah. account and taxing them still and not doing their infrastructure and things that they need. So not funny, if you want to go sure for an override, you can kiss that goodbye. And I'm, I'm so warning you now. Let me tell you what my theory is here, and maybe some people will understand a little better. If we say our theory is 10%, our budget right now is $14 million. So we actually have more money than our goal is. So that's yes, what I was say. That's you, about what $2 million is right now. So you wouldn't so be we're putting. In good shape. So you so, wouldn't be. So if we set that ten percent as a policy to hold that amount, then we made a little progress this year. So then you wouldn't be putting money into it. Very little. So you, you don't have a policy that uses a percentage method, though. No, we just use the uh, theory of what's the worst case scenario. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess making a policy based on catastrophe that you can't really predict doesn't seem entirely as rational as using a percentage of your operating. Although in the sewer fund, um, we came pretty close to being the right number. We spent half a million on a sewer catastrophe, which was a pretty minor catastrophe in the world of sewers. Could have been bigger. Could have been a lot worse. And I just want the public to know, we're not just throwing these numbers out willy-nilly. There are a number of, of sources that you can go to, the DOR and the... The uh, local you, services, That's my you know, point. <laughs> tells you tells you what a recommended is, and our DOI report. If you go through that report, you'll see what they suggest for the water reserves and what they suggest for the wastewater reserves, and what what they uh, suggest we have for uh, uh, town stabilization. Okay, so and the last time they came in, DOR came in, they said we were pretty much on target with right. the figures that we had. So. So we have the report? Let's use that. Okay. I'm all right with that. Do you have that? I mean, you know, we can, we, we can kill ourselves report after report, but we've already got them. Well, I, I think it's important, to, to Howard's point, I think it's important for people to know that we aren't just 
pulling this out of thin air. I mean, what we're trying to do is implement best practices for the town of Hadley that have been tried and true elsewhere. So why, why recreate the wheel? I mean, and, and then talk through why, if it does make sense that we're different, that everybody understands why we're different. Probably not, but that's okay. I mean, we can at least have the discussion in that context. And then you're gonna find where we are a little different because we're, in my budget thing where I work, uh, we actually use three months as our goal. Mm -hmm. We hold three months, but then the budget for the two, for the water and sewer is, is $4 million. Mm -hmm. So you're back to a million dollars. Um, in, in Hadley, the budget's not $4 million. We try to keep a million in reserves. But we know that, we do know that the issue we had was half of that went away. So it will be adjusted a little bit, and we just need to work on that. So whatever that DOR says may be a good number. Maybe we need to adjust it a little bit. So we'll get. So we'll put that on our next agenda and actually get the DOR numbers. Mr. <coughs> Nixon has it now. I do. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bear with me one moment. So in terms of, uh, <coughs> why don't you continue and I'll uh, find okay. the information. But going back to Roby's point about not just listing the catastrophes, I think the other thing that helps inform how much you should keep in reserves is to the extent we have potential catastrophes that are not accounted for in the operating budget and they're sitting off to the side you may want to hold a little bit higher reserve than what our policy is because you know that we haven't addressed issues one two and three over here and if all three of them blow at the same time it can wipe out your reserves so so I think both of them are actually is important to do both I don't think we have any numbers set on our water or sewer reserves. It's just whatever is, is in there is in the reserves, correct? No, water was to be, as I, my, best of my recollection, water was to be fairly close to a million dollars. And sewer was somewhere between a half and three quarters of a million dollars. I so think. then the excess goes into operating budget? <laughs> excess of? Okay. The, uh, the town's policy that was adopted was that uh, you should have in each of the enterprise reserves, 100% of your annual operating costs with the, with the idea that if you, for some reason, could not generate bills for an entire year, you could live off those reserves. So that's, that's the policy that was adopted. We've only adopted that policy for the enterprises. Yeah, sewer and water. So then the next yeah, well, the general fund is still at the two million dollar number. So you really have four million dollars in the bank right now. Yeah, but you can't use that yeah. two of those million you can't just use for general fund operations. Yeah. Because yeah. somebody comes and knocks on your door like that, and says you did a no no. <laughs> keep talking while he's looking. He's still looking? Oh. All right. So then again, mm -hmm. if we did that, then the next thing is stabiliz capital stabilization. What do we want to hold? as our capital, or not capital stabilization, capital expense, what do we want to use for our capital every year? Mm -hmm. And do we want to target that as a percentage of? Of overall revenue. Well, we use whatever we get from? Yields taxes Heels going taxes. up. Right. Right. So we're going to tell people we're going to spend more on capital, and then tell them and we got to raise their, and exactly. cut their operating, and, or raise their taxes? Yeah, we have that same issue. If, there, if meals tax went up $100,000, are you going to cut budgets and not use that? But look at, the, look at the capital expenses oh, that we sure. have that have not been taken care of for years. Oh, so sure. but how do you tell saying, people that, no, we're not going to use the capital budget It can't go both ways. Right. Yep. I mean, we've got a nice call. And if we decide to stop eating out all of a sudden and the meals tax goes down, then you dry up your capital account. No, I that's feel like not I do my capital. Part. You know <laughs> I don't know. So, since we're talking about capital, in the one of the appendices of the uh, the budget book that I presented, I offered a, uh, a different way of funding capital. If you all could take a look at that, um, it's uh, something, another tool in the tool chest. I don't have that with me right now. I 
actually it's, it's in your budget book. You yeah, it's in the budget book. Actually, yeah, that one there. All right. Okay. Okay, so stabilization fund uh, is in excess of $2 million, representing more than 11% <coughs> of operating fund, which exceeds the town's dollar target of $2 million and exceeds the state benchmark of 5% of operating funds. State. <coughs> so let it be. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I kind of like 10. I like 10. It's a nice round number. So moved. Hmm. I see lots of head shaking. Let's, <laughs> let's, yeah, let's just, can we just do it? Let's just say 10%. 10% of operating is our goal. Why not just do what the state does? It's 5%. Why do you have to do more? Well, because that goes well, because back to the things because we're we're small. 5%. You've got a lot of money that people are going to say you can tap immediately. Yeah, then we, have, then we don't have an operating shortfall anymore. Sure don't. Five percent it is. Yes, you do. For one year. <laughs> for one, for <laughs> one, one year. year. <laughs> because once again, you're using one-time money to fund. I know. I guess but it's not sixteen, though. Yeah, yeah, but then by nine. That's what we do every year. But we by get nine. The next year. But well, if, we're not going to get through the next year if we do it this year. But by nineteen, we'll be at uh, our budget. <laughs> Ten percent would, right. would be two million dollars. Right. 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 We're just trying to catch up with right. it. Yeah, so <laughs> it's growing. So, I mean, we're at a good point now. We've gotten yeah, to a good, nice good place. If we agree that 10% is the number we keep, and we agree that any interest made in that account, even though interest is low right now, just stays in that account, then that's, that might be the way to say it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nods. So does that mean then the 1% over that you have now can go back into helping to fix the shortfall? Uh, we haven't decided that. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, no, but I mean, that's a separate discussion. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would say not because not really. So th if you do say that, though, if you do if you do say that one percent can go into the operating budget now, then as you look at your five-year budget and you see you're going to be right. at Worse. twenty million dollars in mm -hmm. five years, then you have to now put a number in that five-year budget to build it back. Mm -hmm. yep. So we can either <laughs> we can either take it out now and build the number back in to make the budget worse. Or we could leave it the way, it, way it, is. it is, knowing we actually have a, a yeah. sunny spot. Over the period wait, of five there's third, years, it'll be third more option. gradual. You take the excess, and to the extent that you find something to invest in, that is ultimately going to save you money in the operating budget, then that would be money well spent. So for example, just for example, if it were determined that purchasing uh, not even going to say state of the art, but just, you know, uh, information, investing in information technology was ultimately going to help us in terms of manpower, reduce overtime, reduce office supplies, paper, whatever. If, if, if you could determine that, then it was money very well spent by coming out of stabilization because you are saving sure. by not just building more and more right. into the future budgets. Right. The same That's stuff. a smart way to, That's That's a yes. smart way to way do it. Although well, we should look at our capital first. Right. I'm just using an example. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Sorry. You could theoretically hire somebody that was would ultimately reduce overtime with that money and have the same effect. So which, which is what you're looking at, like, for example, the police department, I mean. If it, if it were actually worked. If it actually worked. Right. So I'm not clear. Is this a tribal decision? I, I was assuming that was a board of selectmen decision. It, it is a board of selectmen decision. decision. But, so not but, but the question. <laughs> but we have a, we have us all together, and the input would be if you if everybody here says no, we think that's wrong. If the information here says yes, it makes it go much nicer. Do people oh, feel? Yes, I, I agree with you. So do people on the select board feel that we need more time to determine that 10 percent? That we need to do a lot more analysis on that, or? Howard's saying yes. yes. Not if it costs money or time. The analysis. I, I think but it also costs it's costs it's all time. part of a yeah. plan yeah. to yeah. sit here and say you're going to do this, and we all go this way. Mm -hmm. I'll guarantee you a week and a half from tonight, we're going to be looking at something else going, geez, if we hadn't done that, well, move the money back over here. Well, that's Nobody's the goal. Nobody's moving money anywhere. That's no, I'm not still sitting at five, so I, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do with that? Well, having gone through taking money out of stabilization and trying to put it back and go through the same arguments year after year, 
saying, well, why should we put it in stabilization? We really need it for operating. Uh, why put it in stabilization? We need it for this capital. Why put it in stabilization? Because we need this. And they're all good, solid reasons. You know, you've got to survive day to day. Hitting your, your funds is just like taking money out of your savings account. You know, it's tough to put it back. So I agree with you. It's a piece of, it's a piece of the puzzle. But I think that what I'd like to suggest right now is that we at least verbally or you know informally assume that we are going to adopt that policy after we've finished the put you know putting it in the context of the financial so put a stake in the ground now and say yeah that 10 percent figure makes sense we'll park it we're not going to vote on it now but have that in mind as we roll forward and then let some other compelling reason unravel it because otherwise we're just going to keep talking and talking and talking which is what we do. So, if we just for conversation's sake, if we say 10% is what we're going to do, and our budget, uh, operating budget, we're agreeing is how much? 15. 15. 1.5. So, 1.5 million dollars we're saying should be in the reserves. Does that mean that everybody in this room agrees that we can look at taking a half a million dollars out of stabilization? For various and sundry things. No, no. no that's, that's, a, that's a separate issue. That's a separate, issue. That's a separate, separate Totally separate. 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 Because you still have to build it, like I said, you still have to build it back in four years because we're right. going to be at 19 million. Right. Yeah. So we're ahead of the game. Yeah. Right. We're just trying to make ourselves feel good. We're just making a policy. We're just making a point. Than taking money out to do something. I just say don't touch stabilization. Uh, policies mean stuff. It does. Yes, yes. it does. And I'm not going to vote for something that says 10% when I know darn well that we're going to be looking at something in the next few years out of stabilization. So, no. Well, so just that we're, we're not voting, and it, it would be us that would be voting, but we're just saying we're putting a stake in the ground now. Saying, saying 10%. We want to kind of say, okay, we've talked about that one issue, we've come to some reasonable conclusion on it for the time being, and now we want to move forward and talk about other things. Mm -hmm. That's just, what we're just saying. Just remember, the town meeting has but, the final say in all of this. Yes, but I think they do. the recommendations to town meetings. But we, but we have to have some type of, I mean, we have to have some type of rationalization for how we got to that number, which is the plan you're talking about. You need a financial about. plan. But, but that's you got to look at the thing from beginning to end, this all will flush out. But we're not going to get a financial plan, a complete financial plan, unless we start taking one piece at a time. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. We have a hard enough time just looking at one, looking at things, one piece at a time, we'll get there. Mm -hmm. We don't eat the elephant one, one whole thing bite. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't eat that at all. Because we do. We have a big. We have a large problem. And we need we to take. To and we need to take the small steps and agree to small steps to get there. Is why I feel. Mm -hmm. But at the very least, by putting this stake in the ground, the one decision that is being made about FY16 is that there is not a need, at least if this stake stays put, to put more money into stabilization. That's exactly. And that's, so that, yes, so that at least we are making one happening. step forward with FY16. It's now the third week in February. We are not close to having an FY16 budget. We need to have an FY16 and budget. We and we have to have a plan for 17, 18, and 19. Totally agree that we need the financial plan to get there. But at this point, please don't let us get back to where we have been the last two years, where it's May and we still don't have a budget. That, no, we can't, we can't okay. do that again. Okay, so what are we doing next time? Next time? <laughs> We're not done. Next on the agenda. Oh, okay. yeah, keep going. Our goal, as I, I thought, what we're trying to come up with in discussing the, the fiscal 16 is a recognition, first of all, that the revenues don't cover the expenses. Right. A, 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 an understanding that is still our policy that revenues should cover expenses, and then how do we bridge that gap? And the first place I think that we, we continue to gloss over revenues, I'd like to take a step back on the revenues, which is why I was asking about that meals tax. I want, you know, first thing we do is make sure that we have maximized the revenues not in, in two ways. Not only are we getting the most we can from revenues, and there's a limit of how far we can go with that, but are we also recognizing and reporting the maximum amount of revenues that are actually there? 
because if we cut a budget way back based on a certain revenue figure, and whoo, we get this free cash boost of four or five hundred thousand, that was because we underestimated revenues. We'd rather not know that now than find that out in the fall. I want to make sure. I would want to make sure that we really t look closely at those revenues to see if we can bridge that gap somewhat by increasing that. The, the next thing I'd like to see is we have, um, that we have, and, and it's going back to that pot of gold, have we maximized the amount of cash that we can make available to us? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't favor closing those accounts and, putting, and calling them revenues. They're not revenues. They're cash balances that we're pulling back into the system. But can we use those additional ca ba cash balances that we can recoup and say, why don't we push those to our, our capital stabilization uses this year? And why don't we go back and revisit that meals tax, and why don't we call that revenues again? And why don't we come up with another policy about, okay, first year for capital, sta capital stabilization, we're going to replenish that uh, meals tax with a sweep, the sweep of old articles and all, and get, gather all the extra money that we can, and we're going to direct that to capital stabilization. Then that's another way that we have pulled that, that we've brought it maybe to $250,000 closer in that way. So if we can increase revenues a bit, and if we can decrease the two hundred fifty dollars because we're cleaning up pots of gold and now we're going to use that in revenues again, we're starting to get there and perhaps, perhaps a way that we can just buy ourselves another year while we come up with a bigger financial plan. Right. So we have those action items in place now, right? We, we agreed to, we agreed to, Gail's going to do Gail's going to give us the information we need to clean the accounts, and okay. we're going to put an right. article in there for that. Right. All right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And then the revenues, are we going to? Yes. And then David, David and is going to. get the actuals on the FY14 revenue. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what's the meals tax policy? And the meals Does it tax. Has to go into a capital stabilization? I know it was voted on in a special. Right. Town meeting so what's voted on that right policy. Now. The, the policy came out of a situation where the meals tax was just implemented and we had a gubernatorial candidate running on the platform of repealing the meals tax. So we decided, the finance committee decided really that, uh, that the meals tax should be going into capital because it was new revenue and if it went away, it wouldn't be hitting the operating budget. Uh, I think meals tax is here to stay. I don't think there's that threat. Right. Of it being revealed anymore. But I think Roby's asking what would it take to change? Do we have to go back to right. town meeting because town meeting no, voted? No, town meeting is an appropriating body. This is the policy making body. So, so we okay. can change the policy. We just told yes. everybody. So town meeting was just told we're taking this money and using it for that. Yeah. I, I think that's. But it wasn't that they. It, it, was wasn't. it was authorizing the meals tax in general. Not right, for the, the appropriation, the, amount. the transfer, the the transfer actual, of the right. appropriation, but the actual policy is set by the select board and recommended by the finance committee. Mm -hmm. but we need to Howard this. has. Right. No, it's just that I mean, we go through this financial gymnastics every year. We're actually taking the meals tax, putting it in as revenue, and that amount of money we then take out in free cash at the end of this to fund capital stabilization. You can go back to every year that we've had the meals tax because we wanted to set aside something at town meeting that designated that and it turned out that that was either too cumbersome or wasn't politically feasible. So we've always considered that a revenue, but we've just taken it out of free cash in the, in the fall to fund stabilization. So we're including that as yeah, as, 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 revenue. as revenues, and we still don't match expenses. So can we start talking about action items on the expenses then? Well, I kind of want to clean up on this one. So no, do we, because then we'll know what our gap is. What we're, we, do, do we want to kind of right. look at look at what possible numbers we would set aside for capital? So we're, mm -hmm. what do we want to, I mean, we spend close to, um, yeah, it's like two percent is what we. Two fifty is always been designated. So yeah, around two or three percent is what the uh, meals tax going into capital has represents in terms of your operating budget. Uh, but then again, our capital. <coughs> come on, come with me to those thrilling days of yesteryear. Every time we get to the fall, we have a million dollars worth of free cash. 
only two hundred thousand dollars of that, or two hundred forty thousand of that, goes into capital stabilization. Believe me, we spend a whole lot more on capital than that two hundred forty or fifty thousand dollars. Yes, you're out there buying fire equipment. You're buying this. That million dollars just vanishes in the fall. But, well, and to your and point, all for good, solid projects. But this is where you need an analysis. I mean, I would love to go back. Just call it five years. See what we actually spent on capital, yeah. right? Uh, why am I looking at the, the capital planning yeah, I mean, committee has yeah. a capital plan. But which right. capital are you talking about? What we spent on capitals total, cap total capital or designated capital from the meals tax? No, or total. As total. Total. Or total. what you're saying, what we've done for the last five years and been buying whatever we needed at fall town meeting. Because right. patterns do develop, and that will help inform what we, what we always should be thinking about setting aside going forward. We just happened to pick, the, for the reasons David stated, um, the meals tax. But maybe that's not the right number. Maybe if you look at all of our inventory and whatever else and whatever projections we have down the road based on the age of equipment or planned purchasing, maybe we need a significantly higher number. Maybe we don't need as much, it turns out. So, But it's hard to know that without having an analysis done. But we, we had none before the meals tax. No, yes, we did. We're trying to say all the we had. The, the we meals tax was originally set to say, okay, we've got some capital needs in buildings, right. and that first two hundred and forty thousand was set aside for the mm -hmm. senior center and this building, right. and a good portion of that still remains in in a fund in the pot of gold report. <laughs> so, but we that's that was what we were trying to get at, trying to get something okay. for the buildings, whereas the free cash seem to have been spent on everybody's, uh, uh, I won't say a wish list, but you know, their, their needs. capital needs. Every, every department head had a, a capital needs that weren't being funded for ages. So, so we, we spent a lot in capital over the last 10 years. Can we actually pull together all that? Yeah, so uh, what you're looking for is uh, for the last five years capital expenditures of all the stripes, whether that be mm -hmm. reserves from enterprise mm -hmm. funds, borrowing through the enterprise funds, borrowing through the general fund, mm -hmm. um, free cash expenditures, capital stabilization, or and any other source, mm -hmm. including CPA. Mm -hmm. um, debt and interest, too. Mm -hmm. Debt and interest, too. That, that's Because debt and interest on our capital is hidden in our, that's right. over in another spot. Right. Mm -hmm. So we actually may find out that we're actually spending probably close to, even though we say it's only 2% this, this, this meals tax number, our real number may be closer to 10. Right. You're, you're funding capital for many different sources. Yes. The meals tax is just one of those strands that makes your, your approach. So we'll, to we'll pull that together for, you, you can pull yeah. that together for next yeah. time. Yeah, should be quick. If, if it impacts our budget planning. Yeah. Yes. And, and again, since we're talking about it, I do, do recommend that you take a look at Section 8 of the budget book um, because it has a different approach to capital funding, which may be a substitute for the way that we're doing it, or it may be in, a, in addition to it, but it's... it's a, you said Section 8? Section 8, please. Like the title of it? Like the crazy people? Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> I wasn't going to go there. I said it in I said section 8 in Roman numerals. Okay, so I think we ha we actually kind of decided on something. And then we have a lot of action items to put together for to move forward for the next meeting to help us with the next with this budget. I got one no on the shake. You should see one. Well, no, that, that's no, a perpetual I'm, no. <laughs> no, it isn't a perpetual no. I'm just sitting here shaking again. You know, could we at least have a subcommittee that would look at numbers to see whether we really are what's proposed by the numbers we have, so that in 19 we're looking at a 1.2 million dollar deficit. Then, so that, then, so that, that can be the basis of, of a capital plan. So May is coming rapidly, and we better have a plan in place because we can't cobble together something to get through 16 because we'll never be able to deal with 17, 18, or 19. I agree. I agree. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, subcommittee who had, that has been meeting in between meetings, 
mm -hmm. the, the tribe board? Mm -hmm. Is that something that we can take up mm -hmm. at no. our next? In I'm between? okay with that. If everybody yeah, else is yeah. up. If anyone yeah. else wants to join us, that's fine. We're not. Um, we're not exclusive. <laughs> we're not exclusive. No. If we have a cat and a dog that joins us every once that's in a while. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. So our next tri board meeting is on the fourth. <coughs> the fourth. Yes, the fourth of March, and that's when we'll have all this stuff. And we'll try to get it out before the fourth because we're not meeting next Wednesday, so we can work on getting that out. All right. Thank you very much. I guess you all want to stay for the next one, do you? Thank don't you? you.